yeah. You're, I'm Zachary Fowler, you're watching 87 Days, and this is my reenactment of all I did out on a loan, but as if I did it here in Maine with the resources I find here, and today we're gonna go and talk about how to keep your fire going for 50 days like I did out on a loan with my secret banking method I learned from an old book about uh, fireplaces basically in people's homes back in the uh, 1800s. And um, we're also gonna work on the shelter a little bit, try to get those walls up a bit higher and talk about how I processed and did my firewood out there and uh, what I do differently here in Maine. So let's get to it. Less talking, more working, right? Right, finally fall is here. I can wear my orange hat permanently. I feel like uh, I'm missing the top of my head when I don't have this on. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just something about a wool cap. Ever since I was a kid, you know, I was wearing a, a wool cap. And uh, and over the last, I don't know, four years that developed into an orange wool cap as my favorite color. And here it is. But we're talking about fire. And out there on a loan, I wasn't able to get a fire going that first night. I thought, in some ways I thought I had overestimated myself. I was pretty bummed about it. It was so damp there. It was hard to work up the material to make a bird's nest that was uh, soft enough and pliable enough and, and uh, would, take, would take a spark. The next morning, I've already mentioned this in my videos. The next morning I managed to get a fire going. And I decided that as much as is possible, I didn't want to have to relight my fire the next day. So I started experimenting with uh, sparking the next day, sparking up pieces of charcoal. And uh, found that certain pieces of charcoal uh, sticks. If you burn a rotten log until it goes out, on the back side, it's really feathery. It's really, it's really, it's, that's the only way I can think to explain it. A regular piece of coal doesn't seem to want to take a spark and it doesn't blow to life very well. But a rotten piece of wood that's burnt and gone out has this feathery look to it. You throw a spark onto that and it, it'll continue to uh, glow as long as you blow on it and you can put your tinder onto that and bring a fire to life very easily. So that was the first way I found to make my fire easier so I didn't have to continue to just throw piles of sparks at, at, at a, uh, a tinder bundle that was damp until it finally caught. Processing down that tinder bundle more and more and drying it next to the fire meant you could have a tinder bundle that took a spark really well, but uh, that, I just, it, it wasn't the best solution. If you're in Maine, I just throw a spark onto a piece of birch bark they, you know, I work them down, you see me work it down, process it up, and I use my fire starter bracelet from Wazoo that I got here. But after about a week of that, working the, every, you know, trying to spark up coals, the right, find the exact right coal out of my fire, um, I started working on uh, keeping my fire really big so that at night it would burn down and maybe I'd have a, um, a rotten or a wet piece of driftwood that would sink into the ashes and then I'd be able to flip it over in the morning and blow it to life. And that worked half of the time, but it wasn't consistent. And somewhere about three weeks in, I remembered, I'm still down at my lower shelter that looked like that one right here in the behind me, just a little A-frame. I remembered something in an old book. All of a sudden I could picture it and I remembered this method of using a open fireplace and piling up your wood in it at night and then burying it with ashes. And it allowed that wood to smolder and cook through the night, coalifying, and then the coals burning with less oxygen. It was like allowing you to basically dampen down your wood stove, you know, but with an open fire. So I started experimenting with that. 
um, piling the ashes on top more and more. And, and half of the time it would be out in the morning and other, you know, and the other half of the time it would be going. And I didn't perfect that until I moved it into my upper shelter, that eight stories up and over the hill. Um, and I had my indoor fireplace with a little bit more rock around it and stuff and allowed me to, to perfect the method. And I, once I moved up to that upper shelter, I had one fire in that that went out the next day. And then I built my stone hearth. And then after that, I was able to keep the fire going. I kept it going for 50 days. So that playing around with it up the lower shelter, because uh, out there, it was down there by the waterfront, it was wet, the wood wasn't as good. Once I moved up over the hill, I was able to harvest better wood. So to show you the method though, I gotta keep the fire going for a while here. And then, because uh, the, the foundation of this method is by burying a large amount of hot coals with fresh wood on top and then the ashes. So we're gonna let this burn down for a while. I'm gonna get some more wood and try to bring the walls up on the shelter a bit. And I'll show you how I harvested my firewood out there. All right, found a nice piece of hardwood out there in the show. That first month of being down by the water, everything was damp, it was wet, it was driftwood. I was always struggling with the, getting a lot of good, getting good heat off the fire. Best way to get good heat off the fire is good firewood. So when I moved up over the hill, I found a spot about a football field away I could harvest my firewood at. And generally, this is what I found is firewood that was, I don't know, something in the four to 10 inches in diameter. The 10 inches was better. And uh, I just chop it down and bring it back in lengths. I'd have like five or six pieces that were, depending on the diameter, the length of my ax. Got it down. In the end, I actually built two saw bucks. One at my camp, and one at the place I harvested the firewood. I cut it on this hillside, drag it down the hillside, and then cut it into uh, lengths, about this length of my saw or my ax, put them in the backpack, and take them that football field distance back to my shelter. I'm gonna let it burn down. Some nice hot coals. And then I'll be able to put what I call night logs. Logs that are good, dry, and usually unsplit. I put on the hot coals. And I can keep that fire banked and asleep and still burning so that I opened it up to hot coals for 12 to 14 hours. It's burning down, got some nice bed of hot coals here. Scooch those to the side and find the ashes I need to do what I need to do here. I'm gonna put her to bed. We'll wake her up tomorrow morning, it's about seven o'clock. Oh yeah, there's some nice ashes there. Yep, this is gonna work good. in here just right on top of the coals. That way they don't want them to open up with a gap underneath. Nice packed down and solid on top of the coals. Works much better with a U-shaped fire pit. So you can get in there and get the ashes out. All right, since the way the fire pit is shaped, this time I left this end open and buried it back over this way so there's coals and ashes, and coals underneath here, air gets in, this first log will burn away. And as the logs coalify and burn away, this should all be coal, charcoal, hot charcoal, once I scrape away the ashes in the morning and ready to go.
All right, it's now been overnight. It is 11 o'clock the next day. I've checked on it a couple times this morning when I woke up, I stayed right here. And, uh, and then I went out and got a coffee, and I came back and checked on it again, and then shot the slingshot some, and it's still hot. I'm gonna have some red hot coals in here, but before I bust open my fire, out there I would have already been awake by now at some point, but um, I wanted to let it go as long as I possibly could to show you the capability. It was seven o'clock last night, and it's 11 o'clock today. That's seven, uh, 12, that's so like 15 hours. I'm gonna bust it open. Before I do that, I'm gonna prep up my tools like I used out there for my fire starting tools. One was a fire blower. It is a hollow chamber with a narrower opening at this end than this end. The chamber is bigger all the way down. And, uh, and at this end, there's a tiny, tinier hole. All right, chopsticks. One of my most important parts of my fire kit, um, outside of the shovel being able to, to work the fire and, and gave me the ability to keep my fire going like I did for 50 days, which meant I put it to sleep like this and woke it up over 200 times. Because every night I'd put it to sleep, I'd wake it up in the morning and uh, cook my food on it and then put it to sleep again, go out and do uh, some firewood or check on my fishuation down at the water, bring my fish up, you know, put one on to smoke, put it to sleep, wake it back up again. And uh, during the day I'd, I'd keep it a little bit more awake so there's more smoke coming up and smoking my fish. I love to smoke that fish all day long before I finally ate it. Um, so a couple things I would do before I open it up, I, was, I would always have uh, kind, kindling ready, even though for 50 days I only ever used my little kindling pile twice. That's the beauty of the way I do my fire, is I didn't need it. But it was always important to have it ready because you never knew when that one time I might not have as many coals as I needed when I opened it up. And, and it did, twice that happened. And finally the last time after 50 days and 200 putting the sleeps and waking up, I uh, opened it up and it was it was pretty darn dead. I had one glowing coal and uh, I didn't manage to get it to, uh, get it to touch other coals and fire those other coals up in time. <clears throat> but after I relit it that day, I managed to keep it going again for the rest of my stay there. The smallest thing I used that times when I woke up the fire was stuff that was, you know, twice the size of your thumb. That I put a couple pieces if I really wanted to get it going quickly. Most of the time I'd wake up in the morning, reach over, use my shovel, open it up, find the hot coals, rake them out a little bit, and lay a full on, like three or four inch log on there that was, they were stacked around my fire to keep them dry. Put them on there, and kind of lay there for a little while, and I'd write my wizard story in my mind that I was working on, and to entertain myself, and then, Whew, like 30, 20 minutes later, boom, the flare, fire's roaring. And the beauty of having your fire asleep like this, it's like banking down the wood stove. It was still hot all night long. It's radiating that heat down, just like when you bank, just when you, uh, just like when you uh, dampen down your wood stove at night. So this is still rocking the heat. The rocks are right warm. And if it was in my shelter, my shelter's all buttoned up the way my was out there in Patagonia, it'd be, I was warm, warm all night long. All right. So the heat's all right here. It's all hot right here. I'm gonna use my chopsticks, got my blower ready. And my kindling, should I need to put that on there? But for the most part, look at that. Beautiful hot, hot coals. And what I do with these chopsticks is I just take and I pick out all the coals and pile them up. Fire likes buddies, is what I always thought to myself as I do this. Fire likes buddies. So you find fire's buddies, you know, just like when you pile more wood on a fire, a fire goes bigger. Coals, you pile more coals together and you get it going. They, get, they, they light each other up and they warm each other up. It creates an updraft which draws more air in, which uh, makes the fire take off. So for the most part, Every time I put my fire to sleep and woke it up, all I did is to use the little chopsticks and ponce around with a little... Look at that. It's been 15 hours, and I got these super hot coals in here. Once I'm done stacking these up, I don't have to put this kindling on here. I can move right to some bigger sticks. So I basically made charcoal, but left enough air in there 
that it continues to make charcoal of the wood that I've banked in here and then continues to burn. Look at that. Piles and piles of glowing hot coals. So I'm not even gonna bother to use my kindling. I don't even need to use this. I think I'm gonna move right to a, a big old log to show you the uh, power of banking your fire. You can just skip all that other stuff and go right to a roaring, strong fire just by playing with the coals. About half as much again, and then I'll be done, and I can thatch the walls with reed, and it'll be, and then cut the doorway, and a nice thatched roof, and it'll be my winter shelter. Come and stay out here during the winter. It'll be awesome. Well, there you have it. That's how I kept my fire going for 50 days. Boom, woke it back up this morning. 15 hours later, big logs. It's going good. And this was also the key to my being able to have that much fish head soup and be able to cook it down because when I banked down the fire, I could slip that pot up in against the coals that were banked and uh, it would simmer that away and melt the cartilages and melt the, the brains and all the fats and all the materials that were in the fish head to the point where it was a drinkable sludge. So I kept up my nutrients, you know, everything a growing boy needs, fish head soup. So yeah, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe and follow along as more adventures unfold. Got all kinds of new stuff coming along as we as we progress into the closer to the new year and things. Fowler out.